everybody, and welcome into BBN Live presented by eCoach. This is the first of our series, and uh, you know, with the uh, teams temporarily sidelined, UK Athletics is we're, we're launching this new live show on uh, social media. We'll have two shows every day. You can see them on Facebook and Twitter. Um, we're hoping to connect fans to the coaches and the staff who lead their teams. Um, the show will feature two conversations, as we mentioned, each weekday on UK Athletics Twitter. That's at UK Athletics and the Facebook page, Kentucky Wildcats. The afternoon versions, like this one here, will air at 2.30, and it'll mostly be centered for kids. And then in the evenings around 8 o'clock, we'll have one that's for general audiences. Um, the goal of BBN Live is to connect the Big Blue Nation to its favorite UK teams during the time that no competition is taking place due to the ongoing response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we hope you enjoy this as much as we are going to enjoy bringing it to you. And with that, I'd like to introduce our guests for today. First of all, from Kentucky softball, we've got head coach Rachel Lawson with us. And from Kentucky volleyball, we've got head coach Craig Skinner. Uh, coaches, thanks so much for taking some time to be with us for a couple of episodes today. Um, hope everything is going well and that uh, all of you and the teams are safe right now. Thanks for having us on. Okay, I appreciate it. Let's talk a little bit as uh, we we uh, mentioned that this is going to be a little for the kids here in this first episode. So let's start a little bit with your journey to the University of Kentucky. And I want to take you both back to elementary school. And uh, uh, Coach Skinner, we'll start with you. What were some of your favorite subjects when you were in school? Oh, elementary school, the Westview All-Stars is who we were in uh... – I guess outside of kickball at recess and gym class, my favorite class was maybe math. And um, I think I remember studying the uh, TRS-80 Radio Shack computer. It was one of the first computers on that was out there. So those might be my two, two favorite things to do and, and uh, run around the neighborhood, ride bikes and play kick the can and um, shoot hoops in my back driveway with a basketball court that the neighbors would come over. And so that was – vivid great memories of my childhood growing up two older brothers and a lot of kids in neighborhoods so um great times coach lawson how about you favorite subject in elementary school well my favorite subject probably would have been social studies um i just i loved uh i guess what i liked about it was the fact that you're always learning about different people and different cultures and you're learning about the government so i think uh, those things were very interesting to me because I'm more people centric. But um, so I guess if I had to stay inside, I mean, I mostly was outside playing and, and doing other things. But when I had to stay inside and when I did do my homework, that seemed to be the homework that I enjoyed the most. When you talk about being people centric and, and studying government and everything growing up, how does that kind of now help you with your job when you think about dealing with people and then recruiting as well? Well, you know, when you're a coach, you're, you're also a teacher and, and you're out in the community and you're doing all sorts of different types of things. And um, for me, it, it's very helpful because you have to figure out how to organize people. You have to figure out what makes people tick. And if, if you can't get along with people and you can't um, put them in the best position to be successful, you can't really have a successful team. So for me, um, no matter what happens, teams always come down to the people. It, it's always, for me, people first and then talent second. So I think now growing up, when I think about it, I think just just understanding that sort of stuff has really helped me in my career thus up to this point. Coach Skinner, I, I know you mentioned you played various sports. What were some of your favorites growing up? Probably whichever one I was playing at the time. I mean, I just tried everything. I tried baseball, basketball, football, flag football. I played soccer. Um, you know, I was, I was lucky enough as a kid to, uh, we moved to Wales and my, my dad got a job in Wales. And so I played rugby and cricket, which was obviously off the grid of most American sports, but, um, it, it didn't matter. It was, it was whatever it was at the time. And, and like Rachel said, I mean, I just loved being around people. I love you know, going to the playground and playing pickup, you know, whatever it was and, and picking teams and, and, you know, just playing until, you know, my mom, you know, yelled down the street that I had to come home at dark. And, and so for me, it was all sports, no matter what the season was, I wanted to play as long as there was other people there. 
Coach Lawson, how about you? Uh, I know obviously softball is big to your heart, but what were some <laughs> other sports you played growing up? Well, very similar to Craig. I think when we were growing up, you didn't have to specialize in any one particular sport, which I, I like better. So for me, it was whatever the season is, that's what the sport you played. And, and the other thing is I, you know, I grew up in a family and I had, um, you know, I had 11 siblings. So there was yeah. always a team. So even if our neighborhood didn't get together, there was always somebody to play. So, you know, I was always during basketball season, you were outside shooting hoops, you know, did that a lot in the summer. And then at night you would go, you know, you'd play a softball game or a baseball game. And, it, and sometimes it was even like my family against the neighborhood. So that, that was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I would even like roller skate or, you know, play hockey in my, in my garage or, you know, track volleyball, just, just about everything. And, and I really enjoyed that part of it. I wasn't inside very often. And, and back then you didn't really play video games and you, you didn't do all that stuff and you didn't have all the TV channels and everything that you have now. So you definitely were outside playing more than you are inside now, which is one of the things you know, I, I definitely do not like the shutdown, but one of the things that I have enjoyed is watching people out walking, you know, the kids playing hoops in their garage. Yesterday on my on my walk, I saw a kid put out his own little soccer goal and in his own cones, and he was just, you know, out pretending that he was doing stuff. And, and that reminded me a lot of my childhood growing up. So, you know, it was just whatever the sport at, you know, that time period. Did you get to attend any professional or collegiate sporting events when you were growing up? Um, for, for me, uh, yes. So our family did a couple of different things. We always went to, there was a community college in our local community. So we always went to their basketball games in the winter because this was in Montana. So it was really cold. So you had to, um, you know, you had to kind of do something inside when it was at night. So uh, we would go to the local basketball games every time there was a game our family went and, and really the whole town did, which was kind of cool. And then um, prior to my high school days, I actually lived in Colorado. So we had season tickets to the Broncos games. So our family right. would, yeah, that was pretty cool. So I didn't get to go all the time, but you know, you got to divide it out and share. So when I did, um, it was definitely a special memory because there was always somebody going when there was a Broncos game. Uh, Coach Skinner, can you top going to Broncos games growing up? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot talk Broncos. I was lucky enough when I was 14, the Colts moved from Baltimore in the middle of the night, which my father-in-law likes to remind me all the time. So how can I like the Colts if they moved in the middle of the night? But uh, Mike Pagel was the quarterback of the Colts back then, way before Peyton Manning. Um, but lucky enough to do that. We, I grew up in Muncie and Ball State University was there, and so I could tell you all the players, basketball players from way back in the day, Ray McCallum, Dan Palambizio, a bunch of guys there. And um, I was, my dad was a gymnast at the University of Michigan, so I was a huge Michigan football fan and, um, you know, got to go to a couple of those games when I was a kid, which was amazing, just the, you know, the huge crowd and stadium. And, uh, and of course, the Harlem Globetrotters, that was, that was always fun to go to whenever they came to Indianapolis. And you know, rest in peace, Curly Neal and all the guys that, you know, were back in the original Globetrotters. But uh, those were some of my fondest memories of college and pro sports. That's, a, that's an incredible group right there from Michigan and the Colts and, and the Harlem Globetrotters. So uh, uh, that's, I'm sure you, you both of you have some great stories from attending those games. Do you remember, was there maybe a game or a crowd that you remember in particular being just incredible, the atmosphere being incredible? Oof. Yeah, probably. I mean, it, it's it's hard to, you know, as a kid, I was 16 and I was a big football player, loved playing football and I was recruited and I got the chance to go on a recruiting visit to Michigan, but just being in the stands and on the field and they're playing Ohio State and obviously that rivalry is unbelievable and, and I was, I, I became good at punting, that's why I was recruited, but I just, there was a punter on Ohio State that was Tom Tupa was his name, and he just launched balls from the from the fifty yard line into the stands. And I'm like, "That's a different level. Don't think I can get there, but I'm I'm <laughs> glad I'm at least on the sideline to spectate." So that was probably the most memorable one. What about you, Coach Paul? You, you know, for me, when you're a kid, everything is much bigger than it seems. So every event to me was a new event, and every event was special. So it's hard for me to it's hard for me to pick out one because when you go to a ball game and you you know, a basketball game, even when you're watching, 
you know, when you're watching the community college run out, to me, it was the biggest game that was going to be played all year. Um, same thing with the Broncos games. I thought every game was the the biggest game of the year. And I think that's the beauty of being a kid is everything is new and everything is big. And I just loved being with my family and I love being with my dad who, you know, he loved the sporting events and stuff like that. So I think I'll always remember that more than I'll remember the actual play that was going on on the, on the court or the field or whatever it was. Uh, for, I know some of the kids listening may be wondering when you guys are, are playing at home at John Crop Stadium or at Memorial Coliseum, you get these big electric crowds. Big Blue Nation is there. It's a big game. Still get butterflies? I, I mean, I, I enjoy probably practice training more than the actual games themselves. I mean, I love competing. I love being in the middle of competition and um, you know, so yes, the butterflies are there because you're just hoping that your training is paying is going to pay off in that next game and competition. But once the first whistle blows, it, it's gone and you can focus on what you're supposed to do and trying to connect with your players and your staff and, and any situation that presents itself. But, you know, it's, it's been really hard for us. And, and I can't imagine being in Rachel's shoes when the season was shut down and I mean, just you know, it's so many thoughts and uh, things go through your mind. And, and, and like we're continuing to talk about, it's the people and, um, you know, being in com competitive situations with those people that you've, you know, put hours and hours of time in with, uh, you crave. And, and when the whistle blows and it's on and, you know, the silence of the crowd and, you know, because it's deafening in a way um, is certainly something that I crave and miss. And, and you know, Hopefully, and you know, we get the chance to do that again sooner than later. And um, but, yeah, it's it's uh, it certainly gets me going. There's there's no doubt. How about you? Well, Coach? for me, I think I get more nervous when Craig's playing a game, or right before a <laughs> Kentucky football kickoff, or something like that. Like that's when I feel the butterflies and stuff. Um, mostly, I think because it's out of my control when I'm. When I'm getting ready for one of our games, I'm so busy um, with the preparation part and I, there's so many things running on in my head because in addition to just setting the lineup and all the preparation you do for the week, I'm also the pitch caller. Um, so I am, I have to be ultra focused for every single pitch of the game. And so um, for that, just, just, you know, everybody talks about being in the moment. Well, I'm, I have to be in the moment. And because of that, that really just helps me you know, keep my pace and keep my breathing and everything. But, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a UK sports fan first and foremost. So, you know, I've really enjoyed watching all the other teams, but I definitely get more nervous when they're going on the court than versus when I'm on the field for sure, for sure. But I enjoy every second of it. We've got a pretty fun question right here. What's something you would want Big Blue Nation to know about you that maybe they don't? Coach Lawson, let's start with you. Put you on the spot here. Well, I don't, I think, yeah, I think the most interesting thing about me is that um, I was in the rodeo, which I think is really funny um, now when I think about it, um, because it was something that our entire family did. And, and again, because I had so many siblings and I was at the tail end of it, um, it was a family tradition that was passed down from you know, person to person or horse to horse. So, you know, in addition to school, in addition to playing all the different sports uh, in the summer, well, you had, to, it's an all year thing, obviously, because you have to take care of your horse, but we used to compete competitively in the rodeo. So I think that's pretty, um, pretty interesting and, and fun and fascinating, really. We do have a question from social media guys, and uh, we'll ask, uh, what are some things that you enjoy cooking when you're at home? We got, unfortunately, a lot of free time now. I'm sure both of you are cooking at home. So whether you're with teammates, coaches, family, whoever it is, what are some of your favorite dishes to cook? Do you want to go first, Rachel? Well, you want me to? <laughs> well, I am a terrible cook. So I don't know if you start with the bad and then go to the good. Um, for me, uh, I'm just trying to eat really healthy. I'm trying to use this time to uh, kind of get my body clean. And, you know, I can't remember the last time I haven't eaten fast food regularly and I've gotten eight hours of sleep. I don't know that this has ever happened. You know, so many, definitely not so many days in a row. So for me, I just really enjoy, um, I make a lot of salads and I put a lot of different different things in them. Um, so just trying to eat a lot of beans and, and uh, 
stay healthy that way. So you probably are a lot more exciting than I am. So you can take this one. <laughs> well, you have kids, so you got that work. going for you. Yeah, the pressure's on. You better get something on the in the oven or stove. Um, I guess I was lucky to, my mom was a really good cook. My aunt was a good cook. My brother was a good cook. So I learned from them growing up a little bit, but I mean, we have some staples in the house that our kids like. We do a turkey pasta. We had turkey burgers last night. We've done steak. We've done, um, you're gonna laugh, but I, I'd love to make risotto, which takes a while, but it's really good. And there's some stuff to throw in it that our kids like too. And, and so, you know, like Rachel said, I mean, it's just, a, I've never, slept this much i've never probably consistently i always like to work out but running or walking or working out and you know trying to be you know somewhat organized for you know and showing our kids you know hey this is important even you know this is the only thing we can control right now so let's do our best to uh, eat healthy and stay healthy well guys we really appreciate you joining us here on this first episode and we'll be back with you later this evening at eight o'clock to talk about a couple more things going on. Uh, we'll get an update on your teams as well this evening, but uh, I thought this first episode was really great. We appreciate you guys joining us for this one.